Yeah, Fragile X uh, syndrome is the most common genetic cause of mental retardation. It's a fascinating disease that has significant overlap with autism, uh, and yet it's very poorly understood. There's a gene, which is called the FMR1 gene, which is expressed in neurons. Its function is just starting to be uncovered. Um, and it's typically active in neurons, but in the Fragile X kids, it's silent. And um, when it's not expressed, it tends to lead to the over excitement of neuronal synapses, which probably creates some of the behavioral problems. What uh, a group in Israel did was to use human embryos uh, from families that carried the fragile X and wanted to have babies that were free of the disease. And they took some of these genetically diagnosed embryos and created an embryonic stem cell line. And then the Israeli group, led by Nassim Benvenisti, showed that the fragile X embryonic stem cell actually modeled the silencing of the gene that we see in kids. So this was very exciting. It suggested the embryonic stem cells could be used to study the disease. So the scientists working in Nassim's lab then came to Children's Hospital to do a postdoc in my lab. And my lab has been involved in turning patient cells back into stem cells. So we asked, could we make a model of Fragile X by taking the skin cells of a, of a kid and reprogramming them back to an embryonic stem cell-like cell? Well, we were able to do the reprogramming, but what we found was that the gene wasn't turned back on. So what this said was that the modeling of the disease using reprogramming wasn't the same as modeling it from embryonic stem cells. So this is really the first example that we have, and the best example, that demonstrates that embryonic stem cells remain an incredibly valuable tool for research because reprogramming of a patient's skin cells don't give us the same model. Now what's really exciting about this condition is that because a very significant percentage of kids with Fragile X have really the same symptomology that you see with autism, our hope is that insights into Fragile X will start to teach us about autism and perhaps vice versa. So we have a model now, uh, both with human embryonic stem cells and these reprogrammed stem cells, to study the development of neurons, the neurons that we think are involved in the, uh, the, the neurologic and behavioral condition, uh, and start to understand where they're going awry. It's known that this fragile X protein regulates the expression of receptors at the synapse between nerve cells. And in the absence of the protein, you've got too much of this excitatory receptor. And there are now insights that suggest that if you use drugs to block the receptor, you might be able to ameliorate the condition of fragile X. And this may give us insights into drugs that might help autism. One of the receptors that we think is controlled by this fragile X-related protein uh, is the metabotropic glutamate receptor. Turns out there are drugs that block that receptor. And so those drugs are now being tested in, in kids with the condition to see if it helps the disease. With these models, with these diseases in a dish, if you will, we could do some of those clinical trials in the Petri dish. We could actually test whether the drugs are going to reverse the abnormal synapses or connections between neurons that we think are at the basis of this condition.